What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first Payday 2 build in a very long time. Today we are looking at my regen vampire build using some of the pistol skills again. And overall I found this to be a very enjoyable build to use. And it holds its own mainly up to overkill. It's a little bit weaker than some of the death wish builds I've come out with. But um, I've had a lot more fun with this than I have just playing Payday as standard as of late. So it might be something worth looking at while we wait for some more content within Payday. So first of all I'm on the mastermind page and this is where an awful lot of our skills will be found. First of all we're going to want to as always really work our way up through endurance then into leadership we need that stability then on to dominator which is is quite interesting haven't used enough of dominator lately uh equilibrium because as i've already said we're using pistols and it also works on our akimbo primary pistols now and then just to get onto the next rank spotter do keep in mind if you don't have the uh at infamy level 5 it's going to take more points for you to get all the way up here so you can't quite fulfill this build exactly but there are a couple of skills you definitely can drop i'll talk about those a little later on now then we're moving up into joker vampires like to have their human thralls so you bite a guy and you turn him into you know a mindless slave that's essentially what we're going for with partner in crime joker and dominator partner in crime is a newer skill i've really wanted to get my teeth into see what i did there um Having a converted enemy increases your movement speed by 10%, you will feel that, and this is definitely quite a fast moving build. And the enemy becomes the, uh, the covert, convert, that's, that's a word I get wrong way too much for my own good. The, uh, the convert takes a lot less damage, much tankier and more effective as such, especially seeing as how he's got even more health from the Joker skill. Also, you're going to get some additional health when you ace this thing out, so it's a, it, it's a powerful skill indeed. Then we pick up the Gunslinger, all the way, and finally Pistol Messiah. Now Inspire is amazing, one of the best, if not the best, all round skills in the game. But for this build, it's less about helping out the team, more about helping out yourself. It's more of a solo player's build as well, there's a couple of things we'll admit later on that sort of, sort of show it to be the perfect solo as build, and not really meant for when playing in teams. But if you're more interested in playing in a team, and less focused around pistols, you might want to choose Inspire instead. Or pick up them both and drop some points into the Fugitive uh, or out of the Fugitive skills. Because uh, that's where we're moving now as I pick up the Fugitive. Get extra steadiness and armor on Ballistic Vests. For once, we're actually using the Lightweight, uh, which should be a nice change. Then we're going to pick up an extra 10% movement speed. So that's 20 additional movement if we have a Convert. And now we can aim down Sight. Uh, with the same movement speed as we were just wandering around. So, the difficulty here is, do we want to use standard med bags or do we want the uh, the first aid kits? Now, I'm not going to be picking up all of Uppers, but just to get me onto this tier, I'm going to have to ace out Quick Fix. I'm doing these skills, by the way, sort of in order of priority. It's just so you guys who, uh, who aren't, infamy level five know what order you want to pick up the skills in and uh where to try and lose some if you uh don't have enough skill points overall then it's duck and cover and finally i think yeah one more point might as well get daredevil there's not a lot of climbing to be done in payday but you will feel that additional 20 percent speed when you do climb now we've got swan song i want to ace that out swan song has really impressed me especially with fast firing weapons like the akimbo pistols like the lmgs that six seconds is plenty to take out probably half a damn assault wave if you're in the right position when you get yourself down and uh, then with the uh the pistol skills the synergy with pistol messiah you're going to immediately get yourself back up and you could Rinse and repeat. This is one of the main arguments for maybe picking up Combat Doctor so you can uh, refill your death charges with a medic bag. But eh, I'm still keeping first aid kits just because I've got a quick fix. So it's, it's improved the overall viability of my first aid. Now then, trigger happy. We're not going to actually ace this one out. We're a little short on skills. I'd like to have that additional eight seconds or six seconds, I guess, of damage boost. But to be honest, if you're in consistent combat and you're moving from one enemy to another, you don't need it. 
the damage will stack fast enough over those two seconds. And if you're firing your pistols very quickly, have fast firing pistols, which unfortunately I don't show off in this build, though I do recommend a different pistol that might be overall more suited to it, then you definitely don't need to ace this out completely. We have two more points to spend. They can essentially go anywhere. I guess I'll go Hidden Blade and then eh, Brother's Keeper. Not that you're necessarily going to be fighting against thugs, but they do swing particularly hard uh, on difficulties such as Overkill and Death Wish. Then we want to ace out Akimbo. We just have a few more points to go. One thing that I really wanted to try out with my vampire build was Bullseye. Can I tank up shots? Can I shoot them in the head and regenerate myself successfully enough? Unfortunately, on higher difficulties, armor is absolutely nothing. Your armor is going to be taken down in just a couple of hits. And you're not going to be able to regenerate that with only 32 armor every 3 seconds. It just is not feasible. You'll die too quickly. And then they'll start working their way through your reduced health. So even on the tankier builds where you do have a lot of armor to try and consistently refill, this skill is just too far up the wrong tree in order to be useful. So if, if they really want to buff Bullseye and make it more of a viable ability, I suggest maybe moving it to a different skill tree. But as I said, I've got six more skill points to mess around with. So I'm going to go through the Ghost, get Sprinter, ace that out. It's my main priority. Then get a single point in Fast Hands. Now, let me, let me just quickly mention why this build is not perfect and why it's certainly more fun than anything else. Uh, you want to ace out Fast Hands and you want to ace out Transporter on almost every build. You're going to be carrying at some point in a mission and you can really let your team down on heavy bag based missions such as Firestarter or Rats if you don't have Transporter and Fast Hands. Fast Hands isn't quite as necessary but Transporter really is essential. There's too much bag carrying for you to leave this. The only sort of highest where I can see you going without it are Hotstone Breakout. That, that's probably the best example I can think of, um, in which case you don't need either of those skills. So if you want those skills and you want to make this more of a viable build, I would probably suggest uh, probably dropping Pistol Messiah um, or maybe not acing out Partner in Crime. That seems like another feasible option. So that is it for the skills. Moving on into the perk decks. As you can see, I'm running the Armorer. So my idea was instead of me dodging bullets or having the health to tank up bullets, being a, uh, a vampire as I now am. Hoxton's become a vampire. That's what, that's what happened in prison. You know the way. Um, instead, I tank up bullets and I dish them right back out. So additional armor and additional armor regen sort of makes up for the fact that I couldn't spec all the way into Bullseye over here. So I've gone with Armour, even though I do think overall the uh, the Crook skill tree or perk deck is, is slightly better. Um, for the sake of this, seeing that we're not going high dodge, definitely give Armour a go. Now then, still got a couple of things to take a look at in my, uh, in my vampire mask. We have primaries and secondaries and of course melee and armour. So the, uh, the primaries of choice that I'm using in the video are my personal favorite of the uh, Akimbo primaries, the Veronetti's. Um, they are they're just better than the rest from, from what I've experienced. You'd expect their loss of damage uh, that the, the, the Deagle and the Crosskill have over them to really let them down. But I, I feel like the additional ammo, especially when you're not running fully loaded, for example, is, is really going to save you. And uh, I don't find myself running out of ammo with these weapons and so seeing as how I do with the deagles and the cross kills these are my personal choice and they certainly do dish out enough damage moving on up to overkill you might want to be looking more at the cross kills that additional damage is more applicable and maybe even the deagles since they're their buffs but no Bernetti's are still my personal favorite if you want to run them the way I do I have the face punch compensator I have the micro laser just as easily you could go with the combined module though the ergo grip the extended mag, that's quite an important one, and then the elite slide. Moving on into the secondaries, I'm using the broomstick because it looks silly. I've talked about this before. Let me just, yeah, looks so stupid and it, it feels quite good. Um, it's definitely not the strongest pistol in the game though. It's got some horrible iron sights. You can compensate for that if I go into modifying it. I use the uh, damper nozzle. I use the combined module for the additional stability. The magazine, of course, high capacity. You always want more mag. As long as you're not trying to sneak things uh, we'll talk about sight just in a second you don't need the slide but I don't even have the slide unlocked and then the holster stock just to make the thing look even more stupid um, and it's actually a decent enough 
uh, loud attachment. So the pistol red dot sight is really something you want to aim for. I, in this gameplay, I'm not using it. I have it on another couple of my pistols. Um, but the broomstick has really ugly or non-existent really iron sights. So do take a look at using the, the pistol red dot to make it a little more viable. Other than that, some great options are the Bronco, the Deagle. They were both buffed lately. Uh, I do find they, they don't quite pack the same punch you'd hope them to on um, Deathwish difficulty, at which point you probably just want overkill skill shotguns. But I, as I've said in the past, the Shimano Custom's my personal favorite. It's got that good rate of fire, um, as well as reasonable damage and ammo capacity. You want to run it the way I do, I use the Flash Hider with the combined module, the Ergo Grip, the extended mag, always want more ammo in my clip. The pistol red dot sight again, I uh, I do enjoy the pistol red dot sight, I think it improves my accuracy um, in game. And then finally the long slide, because we, we made up the two accuracy points there that I decided we could give away for some additional damage and stability. And, and that is my personal favourite pistol, but like I said, there are no terrible pistols and the the broomstick's one to mess around with, especially if you have the most recent DLC. So those are my weapons. Moving on to the melee. I have another little bit of explanation to go into these. The Nova Shank is a really decent choice. Uh, it attacks very quickly and actually has a reasonably high DPS. Uh, and also you can break through windows very quickly with this. So its overall utility is quite high. Then another option would be the Lucille Baseball Bat, which overall has the best knockdown and damage. Uh, potential that is. I, I found that overall the Lucille is the most trusty of all the melee weapons if you're focusing on melee. I have talked about that in the past and uh, I, I just think this falls down a little bit on its slow swing speed and it doesn't have the same utility that Novus Shank does. Then if you're more focused on knockdown over anything else, telescopic baton is the way I would go. Above the ding dong again that swings just too slowly. The baton has much faster attack speed with that knockdown. So that is, th th those are my three melee weapons of choice. You can just as easily use the 50 Blessings instead of the Nova Shank. I think Nova's is just a little bit better overall. Um, so melee weapons, uh, let's be honest, they're not hugely important, but they do make a little bit of difference moving into completing missions faster and more efficiently. Now then, armor. So there are three ballistic vests, and we really do want to make use of the thick skin and uh, those additional ballistic vest armor points. So you're going to have a choice between the three of them. I would rather have the heavy, I would say, over the standard. Uh, but the standard works just as well. The lightweight, I would advise you don't. You drop just a couple too many armor points, in my opinion, for what is not a huge amount of additional speed or stamina. Of course, you do get that additional dodge, but if you're not running a dodge-based build, you may as well use the heavy ballistic. As I said, it has the perfect uh, balance between high armor, high movement speed, and high stamina. And... Uh, I'd choose it over the combined tactical vest, especially to make full use of all your skills of choice. Equipment wise, I've already talked briefly about this. I'd go first aid kit. The doctor's bag is also applicable, especially to refill your life charges. As I've said, you want to be running at enemies quite a lot. It's quite a close range based build. And uh, when you go down, you have six free seconds to absolutely romp through bulldozers' heads. Um, and I think you, if any of you watch the live commentary, you'll see how quickly I was able to take them out. Character, I don't know, Hoxton seems like the vampire of the group, but I don't know. John Wick's got the personality of a vampire. Um, other than that, let's, let's go into the gameplay and uh, do try out this build if you don't want to watch any further. Um, and hopefully I can show you exactly how it's working in this gameplay. So I've actually been messing around with this build for quite a little while now, and this has been the best gameplay I've got. It is a solo fire starter, playing without the AI, just to try and accentuate how strong the converted cops can be. Running straight into the warehouse with the weaponry in it, and I'm immediately taken down. My brother's keeper did its best, but even with that additional damage from thugs, I was torn apart. You'll notice I'll use that free fire to not have to reload, to not even expend any ammo, and I'll leave a guy around just so I can shoot that final bullet and revive myself with the Pistol Messiah skill. Then clearing out the rest of the thugs is relatively easy. Fortunately enough, the Heavy Ballistic does let me take a couple of bullets. Though, do keep in mind when I make cuts, that is normally because I'm transporting bags, and that shows you just exactly how long it takes to transport bags without the transporter skill. Uh, so again, just to put more emphasis on that, you may want to try and use that skill instead of the, uh, of the build that I've given you here. 
but the uh, it'll, it'll be a two to three shot kill with these pistols. The Bonettis really do rip up. Though keep in mind that's a four to six bullet kill because you're shooting two at a time. I finally get my first convert here. Uh, do keep yourself topped up all the time with, as General McBadass likes to call them, your cupcakes. The first aid kits are designed to prevent you from going down and having to use your pistol messiah charges. I immediately used that convert as a distraction and walk around the back and get some easy back shot kills. Um, I find with the akimbo pistols it's quite easy to get a, a steady beat on a taser who's already hitting you so you don't need a skill like shockproof in the far up technician tree. And using the, uh, the pistol build up in damage I can easily one shot headshot enemies uh, at close range with the broomstick. The, the real damage uh, added onto the broomstick carries it through overkill difficulty. It does that bit extra damage above a lot of these standard pistols but also maintains a pretty high fire rate which is why I say it's not too bad at all but you may want to try and do something about that sight and firing into groups with the Bonettis they are unbelievably strong. You might be better with a dodge build here but I found it easy enough if I'm able to, to keep those first aid kits um, able to keep myself alive and not require the dodge and instead just sort of tank up those bullets and because you have the uh, armor perk deck you're going to regen faster than you usually would so it's relatively efficient in that sense i'm actually blowing up the weapons that is as i've already mentioned transporter you kind of need it to get those bags up the hill instead you're just going to have to be throwing them into the container now i am back again in swan song mode and i'm just going to take these enemies off with uh pretty much gay abandon there's nothing they can do about it but Again, do keep in mind you want to keep an enemy close by so that you can hip fire. One skill I wanted to try and pick up is the aim down sight with your uh, while in last stand or even keep your primary moving into the last stand mode. But I, I decided against it. Just not enough skill points. I'd love to see in a future update um, if we do get another tree. Maybe a small expansion to the number of skill points we get overall. Maybe go up to 150 just to make our builds that little bit more diverse, especially if they choose to keep upping the difficulty above what we've got already on Death Wish. However, I, I, I can't stress enough how enjoyable this build is, and while it may not be the perfect build for clearing out Death Wish with your friend, it's a lot more fun than just, I don't know, try hard shotgunning as, uh, as a lot of my other builds have focused on. Not, not that shotguns aren't fun. But, I don't know, akimbo pistols, now they have access to the standard mastermind pistol skills. They are something else. They are so strong, so much fun, and uh, if built properly, can be a real force to be reckoned with. Um, and you'll notice just how, how easily I can get another convert uh, after I've lost my last one. And that's that, they have 200 health if you convert these guys on overkill difficulty. So they, they really aren't slouches as far as face tanks are concerned. And if you run the AI as well, you're just going to have an awful lot of uh, protective health alongside you. And, and you can really... It enables you to complete Death Wish missions uh, solo, this sort of build. So I've been really impressed by the power of the recent Dominator. I go into my final swan song here, uh, taking out the enemies as I go. I'm moving to try and revive myself. But unfortunately enough, I'm firing into smoke. I kill one too many enemies. And I do go down. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you check out this build. See you all in the next one.